before, you know, a guy would miss a shot and then maybe one person would get a rebound and you would say, that person got a rebound. And then you would say, well, maybe that person was the only person within a mile of the ball or that person fought seven people to get it. It was all the same thing. There was no, there was nothing more to it other than saying this player got a rebound. But with all this data, rebounding, we know, is not a single event. It's like a, it's a big, there's a life cycle of a rebound. Because a player has to get a, takes a shot, and that ball travels through their air and hits the rim, and then bounces off the rim and goes by a bunch of players, and a bunch of players eventually get a rebound. And because we know the positions of all 10 players while throughout this whole life cycle, we can cut it into all these different situations and measure it. So, for example, when the shot is taken, we can say, where are all 10 players standing? We know where they're standing. We know actually where the ball is going to bounce off the rim given where the shot is taken. So we can say certain players are in better positions to get a rebound than other players. Some people have an advantage. And we have some math basically that basically gives value to the real estate that every single player owns. So if you are, and I are standing on the court, we said, well, I should really be getting the ball 60% of the time because I'm standing in a really good place and you're not. But then players move. So as the ball is traveling through the air, players move and run around and they end up getting themselves close to the ball. They, put themselves in, you know, uh, they hustle, what we call hustle, to get themselves close to the ball. Again, some players, even though their position might not be as good, get themselves close to the ball more often than other players. So by being able to measure all this, we can, you know, have a hustle factor above your initial position. And then some people, when they get to the close to the ball, can't actually get the ball. Other players, they might not get to the ball that often, but when they are, they snap it up. So we have this other factor called conversion. So. We were able to break down rebounding into these things, position, hustle, and conversion, which all affect whether you get a rebound or not. And the interesting thing is we can measure all those things for all 10 players for every rebounding life cycle, as opposed to measuring it for one player, maybe. It was interesting because it, it involved us doing a whole bunch of math that has never been applied to basketball. The data is so good here that you're going to be able, we're going to be able to be developing science that's going to be valuable for all kinds of other areas in life in the sporting realm because the data is so good. But I mean, the science and tech that will come out of this endeavor is, is very, very exciting. We have people here who are not sports fans, but who just think the problem is scientific and technological problem is very, very cool. It's exciting to be at that frontier where, with the combination of you know sports and really and good data and really new science you will develop you know, a brand new understanding of things and you can be part of that frontier that, that brings that knowledge into the world. It's kind of exciting as well.